Hello, and welcome to All Things Digital with Citizens First Bank. My name is Emily Stiles. I will be your facilitator today. We are joined by a panel of our in-house digital banking experts. They will each introduce themselves shortly. We are all looking forward to exploring safe banking in a digital environment with you today. Before we begin, I'd like to remind you to remain muted and use the chat to send us any questions or comments throughout today's presentation. We are recording today's event. It will be available on our website at gocfb.bank. Each speaker has some prepared notes, and then we will cover your questions as our time allows at the end of the program. Thank you so much for joining us. I'll pass it off to Heather first. Good morning, my name is Heather Farwell, Vice President of Deposits and Compliance at Citizens First Bank. I've been with Citizens First Bank for 18 years in many areas, deposit, compliance, operations, product development, and lending. My favorite way to bank is by using our mobile app. Our app provides every feature available in digital banking. It's easy and convenient when you're on the go. My area of specialty within safe banking and digital banking is security protection and innovation. Our dot bank website was created and managed by banking and security experts. Our digital banking provides multiple layers of encryption to securely provide you with the same banking services you receive if you were to visit us in person. Safeguarding your privacy is top of mind. Innovation is our culture. Our mission is to provide innovative products and service with unmatched personal service. In 2020, we expanded our digital banking features from added car controls to multi-check mobile deposit to multiple layers of security encryption. Coming soon, we are very excited to introduce a true online account opening process. You'll be able to upload your photo ID, pick your product and begin the funding process. Our online account opening is innovation at its finest. We will also introduce live chat for all areas of digital banking. Live chat allows our customers to interact with staff in real time when they are unable to come into our branch. Unmatched personal service and innovation are who we are. Now I'll pass it on to Maggie. Hi, my name is Maggie Kenny, and I'm a Universal Banker too with Citizens First Bank. I have three years of experience helping customers here at the bank and seven years prior to that of additional customer service. Something I noticed that many customers have in common is their desire to better understand how our digital banking technology works. For me personally, I use bill pay, which is so convenient, and I also use our person to person or P2P payments because it's so easy to repay friends for everything from a coffee to sharing expenses for a trip. For digital banking, my area of specialty is simply helping customers with their online banking, figuring out bill pay, resetting your password, and getting through the security measures. The authentication screens can look different on different devices, so sometimes people need help with that, and we're here to help. We understand that every customer has a different comfort level and familiarity with how the authentication and sign-ins work. We are here to help with that. Ben, you're up next for introductions. Hi, my name is Ben Vanderclay. I'm a Universal Banker One at Citizens First Bank. I have five years of customer service experience and just over one year of experience at Citizens First. Personally, my favorite ways to bank include our CFB digital banking app, my debit card, and our ATMs. The Citizens First Bank app is my go-to as it allows me to quickly move money between accounts, pay on my loans, check my balances, plan my budgets, and manage my cards. I prefer not to carry cash, so I also love the ease and convenience of our Visa debit cards, and I frequently use it while on the move. When I do need cash, I enjoy access to our multiple ATMs through Clinton and Comanche, and I also have our interest rewards checking account and can have foreign ATM fees refunded up to $15 a month. How convenient. CFB allows me to stay in control and in the know when it comes to my finances. Much like Maggie, my experience specific to digital banking is helping customers with their digital banking setup or making changes to their accounts. Many customers reach out when they need a, to reset a password, unlock their account, or have questions about our security measures and security questions being asked. Emily? All right. 
thanks to each of our panelists for being with us today. And thank you, our guests, for spending some time with us to explore the topic of all things digital. OK, there are so many buzzwords flying around already. Let me clarify a few terms before we move on. We refer to digital banking as any transaction you are making when you are not physically in the branch. So if you log in from the website on your laptop or if you're using our mobile app on your phone, that all counts as digital banking. The platform we use is the same on any device, but the mobile phone requires that you download an app. So we refer to it as the CFB mobile app. Now let's get into some topics of interest with our panelists. For the first topic, let's call on Maggie. Maggie is going to give us some pointers on the safety of using digital banking. At Citizens First Bank, we use different security measures like out, out of wallet questions, out of band authentication, and multi-factor authentication. What are those things exactly? Well, an out of wallet question is something that only you know that wouldn't be easy for someone to guess about you. Think along the lines of if your wallet was stolen. Your address and date of birth would be easy to find in your wallet, but the name of your fifth grade teacher would be harder to pinpoint. Asking these questions provides added security. Out of band authentication is when you're texted a code or take a call to confirm you are you when you're logging in. Again, it's a way to assure that you are the person accessing your account. Citizens First Bank digital banking will remember your device if you ask it to. Let's also talk for a moment about card controls. You can easily turn your card on and off through our digital banking. Just log in, click on manage card, click on your card and you'll see the option to turn your card off. You can use this option if you've misplaced your card, but you think you might still find it. If your card is actually lost, give us a call and we'll get a new one made for you. Uh, through digital banking, you can also add alerts to watch for changes to your account. So you can set them up to let you know every time your debit card is used, if your account balance hits a certain amount, or any type of custom alert, custom alert that you might want to set. Heather, how about security for mobile wallet? Thanks, Maggie. Yes, mobile wallets has additional technology and security measures in place. One of those is an interesting piece of the digital puzzle called encryption. Encryption is an important piece when it comes to a mobile wallet. Basically, when you add your debit card to your mobile wallet, then the debit card number is not shared at a point of sale. That makes it harder for fraudsters to snatch your debit card number. It is encrypted or encoded to a new number that is not used again. Sadly, fraud has been on the rise. It's best to stay alert and take measures to protect your personal financial information. Mobile Wallet has a lot of benefits and our Citizens First Bank Visa Debit Card is a great way to get started with mobile wallets. Emily? Thank you, Heather. Ben is going to talk about one of the most important topics for safe banking practices. Have you guessed it yet? Passwords and how you manage them. So passwords are the foundation of security, but having a roster of truly secure and unique passwords can be hard to remember or manage. I recommend changing passwords frequently and keeping them somewhere safe. Be wary of saving passwords on your computer as this give, gives other individuals a quick shortcut to accessing your information. My recommendation is to write down your passwords in a notebook and store that notebook in a locking safer box or somewhere that is secure and inaccessible to others. Better than a quote unquote password is a passphrase, which is a series of words or a sentence that would be difficult to guess or know, but easy to remember. This will allow you to maintain multiple secure passwords with less mental effort. Besides being easier to remember, there's a huge difference in level of security from a normal password and a 10 plus character passphrase. For example, you could set your password as spring 2021 exclamation point. This is an okay password. When it comes to banking, however, you want something better than OK. A stronger password would be a passphrase such as spring is coming soon 2021. Or even better, choose four words that you can easily remember but are unrelated to each other, such as spring bank citizens dog. Most hackers or individuals trying to access your account illegally will use a program known as a password cracker to automatically figure out what your password is. These types of programs start to break down after 10 characters, making a good passphrase almost impossible to breach. For our requirements at Citizens First, 
we want you to have at least eight characters, including one capital letter, one lowercase letter, one special character, and at least one number. This is the foundation to a secure password. However, you can add whatever you like beyond these basic requirements. Back to you, Emily. At Citizens First Bank, our mission is to become our community's premier bank by putting customers first. Our purpose is to deliver innovative financial services and products with unmatched personal service. One of the ways we are delivering those innovative services to you is by helping you navigate the process of digital banking. Our website has tutorial videos that take you step by step through the pieces that you use or would like to use. And don't worry, if you have a question or would like our assistance with getting set up, we are here to help. Ben, let's take a look at the digital banking, shall we? All right, so this is our online digital banking platform. The first thing that you're going to notice when you log in is your profile up here, which you can manage some settings such as your personal information. You can change your username and password, security questions, uh, change the look of how the online banking is, hide accounts, all that kind of stuff. Then here, we're going to immediately see our different accounts. This would include any checking or savings accounts, loans, anything like that. Um, it's going to have your balances. You can go in and look at the current activity as well as some more detailed information about the account, access account specific statements and notices, etc. Then back on the home page, we're going to have a goals tab. So this is for setting your own personal financial goals, and it can be something like saving for college or just creating a savings cushion or an emergency fund. But all of these can be customized to you. So if you just want a brand new TV and want to save up for that, you can set that as a goal and get a time frame for what you need to save and how much you should put in every month. Then over here, we've got a little quick pay section. So this is going to be where, as Maggie was talking about, like our P2P transfers uh, people are, as well as bill pay. Below that, we've got monthly activity. This is gonna give you a chart of all your accounts and their trends over time as far as balances. And then below that, we have our net worth section. Uh, your net worth is going to take your total assets in your accounts minus your liabilities and loans and give you a picture of where you're sitting as far as your net worth. Below that, we have a little spender tr spending tracker or budget area. So you can set up a, a budget however you'd like. You can set a zero-based budget where everything has a designated or a designated amount during the month. Moving forward, we've got a move money section. So over here, we're gonna have our bill pay and P2P setup area. So if I wanted to say add someone in here, I could do that. The payees are going to be listed in this section here. So if you've got someone you pay frequently, they'll be available to quickly tap and send money. And then over here, we're gonna have a picture of what's scheduled. So if we have bill pay that goes out every month, you'll see that here, as well as previous transfers that have happened. Below that, we've got a deposit check section. So this is going to be for mobilely depositing checks. It will include instructions on how to do so and give you an idea of what you put in there. Below that, we've got our managed card section. Maggie Kenny touched on this earlier. This is where you're gonna be able to turn your card on and off, view all your different cards for the accounts. You'll be able to go into each individual card. You can name it if you'd like, manage the alerts on it. Uh, you can request temporary spending limit increases. So if you need to make a big purchase, you can go and do that yourself. Uh, you can change the pen or report if the card is lost or stolen and also add travel information if you're going out of town or out of country. Then we've got our locations tab. So this is going to give us a brief overview of all of our different locations, uh, addresses and phone numbers for all of them, and then our ATMs as well. Below that, we've got messages. So this is where you can directly contact us for support. Below that is our managed alerts. This goes beyond just debit card alerts. So we can set up account alerts for say like 
if a check is deposited or if your balance drops below a certain amount, there's quite a variety of different alerts that you can set. So something you should definitely explore. Below that is a report section. So this is where you can gener self generate reports such as account activity for a certain period of time. And then finally, we've got our documents tab, which is going to give you access to your all of your statements and notices and disclosures for your accounts. Emily, back to you. Maggie, can you explain um, the ways that we can send money using our CFB mobile app? Yes, you can send money using bill pay, external account transfer, and person to person or P2P payments. Bill pay is where you would go to actually send a bill, like a utility bill or something like that. An external transfer you would use when you want to send money to if you have an account at another financial institution. You can use P2P to send money to a friend. You can use P2P to send money to anyone with a debit card. Emily, back to you. Thank you, everyone. Let's take a look at a few questions we've received. The first question is for Heather. I was always nervous about using Venmo and other payment apps. Are they safe and how does this compare to the tools I have available in digital banking at CFB? Thank you, Emily. Venmo and other payment apps can be safe, but what sets CFB's mobile app apart is person-to-person -person transfers are embedded in our app at no additional cost. There are also no additional downloads and you can personally visit or contact your universal banker to assist with questions. The CFB mobile app also offers multiple layers of encryption, so secure banking and ease of use is banking as it should be. Emily? Our next question is, fraud is such a hot topic. It's hard to tell when an email, text, or call is legit. Ben, could you speak to this? Absolutely. So if being asked for information, always consider the source of the request and what type of information is being asked for. If you are not expecting the call, email or text or it seems odd, stop. Most companies will not ask for critical identifying methods like social security numbers or credit card numbers directly through phone calls or emails. If you are uneasy about a request or skeptical about what information is being requested, ask for help. Whether it's from the bank or friends and family, it is always better safe than sorry. Google is also a useful tool as you can look up phone numbers to see if the incoming calls are from legitimate numbers or look up company phone numbers and official contact methods on their website. It is better to end the call and contact the company through their official methods as this will almost always lead to the discovery of fake calls and emails. I would also like to mention that although it can be extra effort, Two-step and out-of-band authentication methods are a great way to keep your accounts and information safe and out of the hands of scammers. Thank you, Ben. Maggie, can you answer the next question? What happens if I forget my password? The complex phrases can be hard to remember. Yeah, if you forget your password, um, one of the nice things with our online banking that we currently have is there's a forget forgot password option. So if you forget your password, you just click on that. You'll be required to answer one of the security questions that you have set up, and then it'll send you a link to your email. So once you click on that link, you can just uh, reset your password right there. So it works very smooth now. Thank you, Maggie. I'm going to send this one out to the group. I see memo balance and ledger balance in my online banking. What's the difference? I can I can speak to this. So uh, the ledger balance is going to be your previous day's end of day balance when everything posts at the end of the night. That is what your final balance was for that day. The memo balance is a more updated current balance that is reflecting both your ins and outs in your account even before they have posted. So it's a good way to see what you truly have available rather than what is in your account from the previous night. Thank you, Ben. Maggie, I have another question. Um, what should I do if I misplace my debit card? 
So if you happen to misplace your debit card, go into the app and turn the card off right away. You have the option to turn it back on if you do find the card, but just in case it's in the hands of somebody that shouldn't have it, it's better to go ahead and get it turned off. Um, after you turn it off, if you know if it's after hours or something like that, give us a call the next day. And the convenience with Citizens First is that we print cards right here in the bank. So you don't have to wait a week or two to get a new card. So it's not the end of the world, but definitely get the card shut off right away. Thank you. Heather, is there a way to link a credit card expenditure, expenditures by category, such as entertainment, auto, et cetera, to the checking account budget that keeps track of same categories of expenditures? Thanks, Emily. Yes, there's absolutely a way to link that. We have many tools in the budgeting model, in the goals models, and what you would do is there's a tutorial that helps you set up those features, or you can contact one of the universal bankers to have you do a step-by-step walkthrough process. Back to you. I'll send this next question back to the group. Can you explain mobile deposit? I can take this one. Um, mobile deposit, is uh, if somebody writes you a check, you have the option through our app to take a picture of the check and it'll go into your account. Um, it is good to know there is a certain endorsement that you have to have on it. So it has to say um, for deposit only, for mobile deposit only, Citizens First Bank, and then you sign the check. It does tell you right when you go in to do the mobile deposit how you have to endorse the check. So be sure to look at all of the information that's out there when you're going to do it. Great, thank you. I have another question. Is there a way to print just the checks and not the entire statement? I can I can definitely speak to that, Emily. So within the app, when you're getting your, your statements and documents, I don't believe there's a way to just print the checks. However, if you give us a call or come through, we can always do that for you. Um, it, we have pretty quick access to that and we can get that printed, just the checks for you so you can clearly see exactly which checks went in and out of your account over that month. Would you mind if I piggybacked on that answer to just give a little more information? We actually have the ability to see what you see in your online banking session. So we can actually help guide you through what those checks would be if you're if you don't want them in print or you want to handle that over the phone. So we could explain to you what that debit or credit is by looking in our core banking system. So we do have several ways, including what Ben had mentioned to help you navigate that process. Thank you both. Maggie, um, I have another question. I use CFB, but my sister does not. Is there a way to send her funds from P to P or is there a better way? Yes, uh, the person to person P to P payment would be the best way to send the funds. So it works a lot like Venmo, but like Heather discussed, it's a lot, it's very convenient because we're here to help you with it. So if you have any issues when you go in to set it up or if you have any questions, either stop in or give us a call and we can certainly do that. But you'll what you'll do is you'll put in her name and her phone number and it'll send her a text or you could put in her email and it'll send her an email that she can, um, then she'll put in her debit card number to receive the funds. Thanks for all of the questions that were submitted via chat. Our time will allow for just a couple, and then we'll be posting the other questions and answers on our website and in the Facebook event for everyone to see. Before we sign off, I'd like to thank our panel for their time and insights, great ideas, and good things to know as we all navigate the digital space for our finances. Reminder to our guests, at Citizens First Bank, our universal bankers are your go-to for questions about your accounts, about opening a new account, or applying for a loan. 
The Universal Bankers are also your digital banking resource for help with anything related to doing your banking online or with the mobile app. Thank you so much for joining us today. A recording of today's events will be available at gocfb.bank. Thank you.